Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In the previous video, we went ahead and redesigned the home screen. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and look at the category listing screen. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right. So this is what we uh, came up with in the last video. So we have the home screen, which basically has the current balance. We also have an overview section and some of the design decisions that we took were that we would only show it for the current month because that is pretty much what 99% of the people or majority of the people would want to see. And it's not actually the majority of people, it is majority of the times somebody would open this app, right? Of course, they should be able to see for any time period, but I decided that uh, we would have that as a second level navigation or basically when you click on this and you go into another level, there you can customize it. But on the face of the home screen, you can just see, you know, uh, for that current month because that's what most of the people would want to see, right? So those are the, some of the design decisions that we took. The next thing what we're basically going to do in this video is basically talk about what happens when I tap on this. Now, if you had seen my video on the app architecture, this is basically what we had finalized where we have the overview of incomes and expenses, which is basically the card I just showed you. And tapping on that is going to give us the categories. Now here I've just written expense categories, but this would be in investment categories, would be income categories and expense categories altogether, right? So when I click on this, I, the next screen, I should be able to see the categories for, uh, uh, for the expenses, for the incomes or for the investments, right? That's basically what direction we are taking because we're starting with the overview, then we're going to the list of categories. And then for each category, we're going to look at the list of transactions and then for each transaction, we have a transaction details, right? So this is basically the structure that we are following. So coming back to this screen, um, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and just created, taken screenshots, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So basically, we want to go from this, uh, from this section. So basically, the overview section of the incoming, outgoing, and invested, we should be able to see a list of categories, right? Now, that categories is right up here in the home screen, and we decided that we would remove that itself because it's sort of conflicting with each other, right? And we want to have a single flow of navigation. We don't really want to have multiple touch points, right? So we removed this entire screen and basically when I tap on this screen, you can see that we get the same screen. So here it says spending summary and here also uh, you get spending summary, right? So this, this thing is being repeated two places and it's not really, you know, relevant uh, to us, right? And it doesn't make sense. Why are you repeating the same thing, right? Um, so this is the main reason we decided that we would remove this section and from the overview section, when we tap on this, we get to see the screen. So in basically this video, we're going to be recreating the screen. Now, another thing here is that when you click on this edit icon, you can choose the data for current year or current month. Um, and we decided that we would just go for the current month because that's the majority use case. We also have tags. Now, because we're removing this section altogether, we would end up showing all the categories, right? Now they call it as tags. Um, now I would have used the word category, but they're using the word tags. That's okay. That's, that's fine. That's not a big deal to be very honest. Um, but uh, we're going to be showing all the tags or categories, right? So there's no need to have this option of top five or custom um, and show data as numbers or percentage. We could remove this as well and make sure that we show numbers as well as percentage at the same time, right? So basically we're getting rid of this entire customization um, and we're just focusing on this thing. Of course, here you have the time selection and basically the time period that you want to see the information for. And we can look into this probably in a future video, but for now we're just focusing on this particular uh, screen. Now, another thing that I want to explain here is that um, when you tap on this, right? So here, the details is for 2023. What the app usually does is it, it resets this screen and shows you information for the current month, right? Now I have changed the time period from the current month to all time 2023 and shown you, but ideally when you tap on this card, you should be able to carry forward the time period as well. So let me repeat that. So here, if it is 2023 and I tap on it, ideally the app resets this screen to the current month, which should not be the case, right? Because, because I tapped on this, the, the time period should be automatically carried forward, right? But just for the purpose of illustrating, I've changed the time period and added the screenshot, right? So if you have the Fold Money app, you can actually uh, check it out and test it yourself, right? So this is basically the screen we're going to redesign. Now I created uh, four personas as well. And this is basically what we had seen in the video of uh, creating user stories. Um, and I'm going to be using the word user persona and user story interchangeably, but but what I basically mean is user stories, right? So let's quickly read them, right? What is the purpose of the screen? So just a few examples here. 
where somebody saying, I think I spent too much on food and drinks this month and maybe even the previous month. How much did I actually spend? I need to cut down um, next month for sure. So basically the person wants to see how much they spent on food and drinks, right? Second one is where did I even spend so much money? I made sure to cut down on food delivery or was it because of the groceries that I bought that now uh, because I have a roommate, right? So these both are sort of interconnected. This is at a very top level. This is food and drinks. So one of the expense categories would be food and drinks. And under food and drinks, we would have, you know, food delivery. We would have groceries. We would have, I don't know, could be anything else, right? Um, so this is one. Here is another one where, um, where am I spending the most, right? If it's unreasonable, I need to cut down and get hold of my finances, right? So you want to see an overview of where you, you spent your money. So, you know, that would help the screen. And finally, I think I've been shopping more ever since my salary increased four months ago. Have I? So you basically want to see a, a, a trend of the expenses for the shopping category, right? So right here, you can't see that trend, to be very honest. You have to change the month every single month. Um, um, and you have to see how that is. So you have to choose December and then see the value. Then you have to change it to November and see the value. Then you have to change it to October and see the value, right? This thing cannot be accomplished with this particular design. So how can we incorporate all this and come up with a solution? Now, the first thing that I thought about is what do I actually show when I tap on this card? Now, of course, we want to show the breakup of the categories, right? But because we're tapping on this overview card, should we show income categories? Should we show expense categories or investment categories? Or should we just show expenses and incomes? That was something that I had to you know, think about because that confused me, right? And so because I wanted to show the categories immediately, I decided maybe we can play around with this card um, to make this a little bit more simpler, all right? So here are a few iterations. The first thing that I did was I split it into two cards and I put it into a carousel where here we would have only expenses and investment. Of course, don't look at the pie chart. The pie chart is uh, the, is wrong over here, uh, but I was just trying out a few concepts over here. So here uh, I had only expenses and investment and here I had incomes, but then you have this empty space, which I don't really know, you know, doesn't make sense. But the idea was that when I tap on this card, I get to see the um, expenses categories. And when I tap on incomes, I would see the income categories. But the problem is if I have to switch between the two, I have to navigate back to the screen and click on another card to see the categories for that particular thing, right? So for example, if I tapped on this card, I would go, let's see a list of all the expense categories. And if I had to see the income categories, I, have to, I would have to come back to the home screen and then click on this card. So this felt a bit inefficient and also there's a lot of white space over here. So it's not really a scalable solution. Then I tried another one over here where I showed some of the categories here itself, right? I was just testing it out, so don't look at the numbers and everything. Uh, within seconds, I realized that we're gonna have so much space over here, so this really isn't going to work because there's a possibility that I might have just salary and but I might have like, you know, 10 categories that I'm in spending money in. So this also doesn't work. Then I tried another option where we would have two cards, one below the other. This would work, but it's just a lot of unnecessary scrolling. And because we are anyway going to be showing categories in the next screen, I don't think it made sense to show categories over here, right? So I tried these three things and I realized that maybe this is a bit too complicated and let's just go with whatever we have, which is this, right? And somehow solve this problem of showing what categories to show in the next screen itself and leave this as it is, you know, keep it simple and straightforward. This is going to be for the current month. And then when I tap on this, we go to the next screen where we have the list of categories. What categories to show there, we can figure that out on that screen, right? So I still kept this constraint. Um, so I still went with this design decision and I rejected all these iterations. And now I'm gonna show you how that screen looks like. So when I tap on that, what do we see? Now, of course, we want to have the ability to switch month versus year. So what I did here was I added two tabs, which is I can change between month and year. So this is, let's say for November, and I would have these three things. Now, again, this is defeating my concept or my design decision that when I tap on this thing, I should immediately see the categories, right? Um, it shouldn't be a case where I tap on the categories and I see categories or when I tap on the, the cash flow and I see the same information, right? So this concept I rejected. Another problem with this is that I can't choose a custom time period, right? There's no way to choose a custom time period. So that was something uh, that missed out. And of course, there are too many boxes over here, which you know I didn't really like, so I sort of rejected this. 
came up with another option where I decided that I would show only the expenses upfront because again, majority use case, people want to see the category of expenses. And I added this drop down where I can choose whichever time period I want. So I solved one of those problems where I could not have chosen a specific time period. There was also a sorting option that's there. Um, so if you come over here, you can see that there's an option to sort between high to low and low to high. So I decided to keep that as it is because it sometimes makes sense. A very niche use case, but still helpful. Um, and don't look at the chart. Uh, I still hadn't redesigned the chart. I was just trying out the information. So I would say this is the total expenses, all right? And I would see the total value. And it would also add the trend in comparison with the previous month. So if we look at this design and this design, there is no way for me to know what is the total. There is no total on this screen. And my biggest question is how can there not be a total? There is no total over here. There is no total over here. And there is no trend as well. How is that possible, right? We have the total over here, which is basically outgoing and invested, but this is so much disconnected from this. Whenever I have a breakup, I need to know what is the total value, right? So I'm solving two problems with this design where I'm showing the total expenses for uh, that particular period, which let's say is November and the trend also in comparison with the previous month. So in the previous month of October, um, I spend 86% less, right? And in November, I've obviously spent 86% more. And then I had a list of categories. Now I created the design, which was very similar to what they had here. All right, I created a very simple design and I started off with that. I would obviously dive into that a little bit deeper, but I just started off with that. But the problem here um, with this is that I didn't know how to show the incomes, right? Because now I'm forcing expenses. How do I show incomes? So I came up with the solution where if you swipe to the right, you would see the total incomes. Of course, don't pay attention to the chart. Just pay your attention to the concept, right? So I would swipe left, I would see the expenses and uh, sorry, on the left, I would have expenses and on the right, I would have incomes, right? So if you just swipe, then you would see both. Now, of course, we have to visually represent incomes versus um, uh, expenses visually with the chart. But like I said, don't pay attention to that, just focus on the concept, right? Now, I wasn't sure if this was intuitive for users where they could swipe and they could see the expenses and incomes. Now, another thing to pay attention to is the investments. Now the investments over here is a separate category that they had, uh, they have chosen here, right? So you've got incoming, you've got outgoing, which is basically expenses and you've got invested. Now, I don't know if I should combine outgoing and invested. All right. Over here. So basically what I'm trying to say is maybe I should have a third item in the carousel where I would have expenses. I would have incomes and I would have, um, investments, right? Now to make that decision, I actually have to talk to users and understand and look at data and see if people actually want that separate differentiation. But for now I've went ahead and just combined it under expenses. So uh, let's say there would be a category called as investments over here. So I have lent insurance, electronics, and maybe I would have a category called as investments and that would be part of expenses itself. Right. Um, that's what they're already doing here. So, you know, investment is already a part of, you know, expenses in that aspect. So I went ahead and did the same thing. But if I were to really understand if we should have a separate category for investments, I think I need to look at data and talk to users, which obviously I can't do right now. All right. Now I wasn't happy with this option as well, because I think there are too many buttons and going to be too many drop downs, And, you know, it's just going to make selecting something or changing the settings uh, a lot tedious. So I came up with another option over here where I still uh, carry forward the same thing, same concept as before, but instead of having it to swipe, I added a toggle over here. So instead of swiping between expenses and incomes, I would have this toggle. But again, choosing a, to I mean, sorry, not a toggle, a drop down in this case, sorry, the wrong terminology I used. Um, so if I have to use a drop down over here, then again, that's too many clicks and it's, uh, it is a scalable solution to be very honest. It is more scalable than this but I still felt, you know, it's too many buttons to tap on to change something. Um, but the advantage with this design was that I could then swipe left and right to view the previous month. So that would be super simple because if I have to check quickly, how much did I spend um, overall for a few months, right? It would be quite hard to do it because I would have to come here, change it to October and then look at the value, then change it to, you know, the previous month which is September and look at the values. Um, and that's something that, users would often do, 
switching between months is something that they would often do, right? Um, so I decided that maybe it solves this problem over here where I can swipe multiple times and I could see for October quickly, right? I don't have to tap anything. And 99% of the time user would be in the expenses section and they would only look at the expenses and not really the incomes, right? And if I want to just look at look at it for a yearly time period, I could change here from monthly to yearly, right? So it does solve a lot of the problems, but it's not the best solution, right? We have advantages and disadvantages. Then I came up with another option over here where I just had expenses and sorting high to low. Um, these two things users would not often play around with, right? They would, of course, to an extent, but 99% of the use cases, they wouldn't play around with these two settings. And in case uh, they didn't want to, uh, they wanted to change the time period, they could tap on this icon, but I don't really want to have this pattern of having icons on the right side. I just find it a little suboptimal to be very honest. Um, so I didn't like that either. Um, I tried another option over here where I have a drop down like this, but again, this is showing a drop down over here is very similar to showing a drop down over here, right? So I didn't like this iteration as well. Now, what I finalized with was this option and uh, I'm doing a, a comparison. So what I did was I kept the ability to choose a custom time period or change it to a yearly time period on the top right, because that is the least uh, often use case. I put that on the right, on the top right side, right? And that sits well over here. It's not really distracting, follows basic patterns. Then the current month would be November, 2023. And I added tabs over here for expenses and income so that users can quickly switch between the two, right? So they know that there are expenses and incomes. And in the future, if we decided to remove investments as a category and add investments over here as another option or another tab, that would still work, right? So very quickly to switch between things. So we're solving that one problem. Here we're solving another problem where the least required use cases of switching to a current year or switching to a time period is on the top right. And when you change the time period, that would change everything over here and also feel like a global setting because it is a global setting. And then because we are under expenses, I added the word total over here. So this would be total expenses of this much for the current time period of November, 2023, and also the trend. And then I changed the chart to show the top five categories, right? Now, of course, you may have multiple categories. You might have 10, 15 categories that you might have uh, spent money in, but we show only the top five because that's most likely what people would want to see. And visually, it is super easy to understand, oh, I spent this much. What did I actually spend that much money on, right? And then you also have this gray color one, which is untagged, right? So um, some of the categories, some of the transactions are going to be untagged. So I added that as well. Now the design of this card, I'm going to have a dedicated video for that because I have to show the iterations and concepts that I did. But for now, this is the final design uh, that I landed up with, right? So we're solving a lot of problems over here. First, I can view the total, which I could not have done over here. Then I can view the trend, which I could not have done over here. Then switching between the various months is super easy. All I have to do is just swipe and this would change to October 2023 and the bottom categories would also update, all right? Perfect. And visually, we're also making it look a lot better because here we have too many surface colors and borders and stroke and all of those things. And here it's super simple and straightforward and matches our design patterns, right? We're using very simple colors. We're using very simple design principles and it looks absolutely fine, right? So here we would have everything. And that option that we had where, you know, I could switch between numbers and percentage with sort of unnecessary complicated things. Now that thing is baked into this. So we have, let's say this is the category. We have the number of transactions. We have the value and also the percentage, right? So if you want the percentage value, which is again, a rare use case, you can get that. But if you're not really interested in the percentage and you want a visual representation or to compare between categories, you can do that here as well, right? So as you can see, there, there's such a big difference between these two screens. And of course, it is super easy to do all the things that I want to do on this screen. Now, the only thing left is for us to change the sorting over here from highest to lowest. Um, I forgot to do that. So let me quickly add a uh, icon over here. So, or maybe I'm going to use the text button. So I'm just going to call this high to low. Um, and we could probably change the icon to the chevron down icon, right? Right. And uh, change the color 
right over here, right? Um, now, of course, I could use just an icon, which was basically the sorting icon, which is because basically I would just use an icon like this. That's a that's a design decision, not a really big deal, but uh, showing this is uh, is a lot better in my opinion. Um, showing the options up front, and when you tap on it, you sort of toggle it. Um, I can still go ahead and work on this and tweak this a little bit more, but you know, you get the idea, right? So as you can see over here, this design is obviously a lot better and a lot simpler compared uh, to the other one. And if we quickly want to go ahead and I'm going to copy these personas and see if we can get that information, right? So I think I spent too much money on food and drinks this month and maybe even the previous month. How much did I actually spend? So if I knew that I spent money on food and uh, food and drinks, I can come over here and look at the actual value and I can get the information that I need. Of course, you can do that here as well. All right. But I could not have seen how much I did the previous month without doing multiple taps. So I would have to tap over here and then change the month. But here, all I have to do is just swipe once and I would see the updated categories and the values, right? Where did I even spend so much money? I made sure to cut down on food delivery or was it because of groceries? Now, maybe this persona doesn't uh, make sense over here because I would have to tap on the food and drinks um, category uh, card over here. And then I would get to see uh, granular details of each category. So once I tap on food and, uh, you know, food and drinks, then I would see food delivery, I would see groceries, right? So that's a different thing. Um, and then we have where am I spending the most if it's unreasonable not I have to cut down. So, you know, uh, I, you can quickly visually see this. Of course, you can, you know, do that here as well. But of course, showing it like this is a much better and it has a lot more advantages. And I think I've been shopping more ever since my salary increase four months ago. Uh, have I, right? So I can quickly switch between the various categories and see the updated values of shopping. Now we can do this over here as well. So for example, let's say one of this category is shopping. And when I look, go to the shopping details page, also I could see this. So we can take these two and these two user stories could be solved in a different place as well, right? So to overall sum up and quickly recap what we did, was we directly showed the respective time period that was on the home screen because the home screen was showing the current month. We see the current month over here. Switching between expenses and income is super fast because we can quickly do that. That was not possible over here. I, there was no way for me to see the incomes breakdown itself. That was a big problem. Then I can quickly swipe to change the time periods, which could not have been done over here. And I have the trend over here also, which is not available over here. Um, and we have an option over here to change to choose a custom time period, which we could also do over here. Um, and, and finally, we have the ability to sort over here with categories, uh, which is sort of very much connected to categories. So, you know, these would automatically change, right? So that's how I redesigned this section. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.